All right, so this video is intended to be all about outer joins in MicroStrategy. Um, but before we get into that, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you this first report here, um, total orders for 2019, to kind of set things up to kind of show you why you might want to do this uh, and, and why you need outer joins in case you already don't know. Um, so let's run this report here. Um, this is going to be like kind of like our before snapshot. Okay, so all I've done is I just selected my total order quantity for 2019. Okay, so the year 2019, my total order quantity is 34,482. Okay, now remember that number. Okay, so I'll close this. And now this next report, I'm going to edit this because I'm going to show you all I did was I did the same thing, only so I have my year, my year 2019, as you can see in my filter up here. And all I did was I added the week shipped. Instead of seeing the total orders for 2019, I want to break it out by the week that it shipped, right? So let's go ahead and run this and let's see what the results look like. Now remember our total order quantity in the previous report was 34,000. So let's scroll down. Here we have it broken out by ship week. Let's scroll down and see what my total is. Ah, here my total order quantity says 25,322. Well, why did I drop almost 10,000 um, orders? Now let's take a look at why. All right, now in order to explain why, we're gonna come on over to our query window here and we're gonna directly query our orders fact table. And I'm gonna show you what's going on. There we go, we'll execute this. So you can see we have order number, order date, the date it shipped, and the quantity. But look what you see here. This order number on row three has a null ship date. So for whatever reason, this order didn't ship. Okay, and you can see there's a bunch of orders here right, that have null ship dates, okay? So this is the underlying problem. Okay, now let's go back to MicroStrategy. Let's look at our SQL, and you can see when we added ship week, right, our week here, it's doing an inner join on ship date, right, which we know is null, and then it's inner joining based on ship dates. Well, we know already that when you do an inner join, Right, you have to find matching records. Well, when you join ship date to its underlying lookup table, obviously you're going to drop records. Okay, so this is the underlying issue here, and this is why you might want to use an outer join. Okay, all right. Now the first thing I want to talk about is all the different ways that you can go about this in MicroStrategy, and which one, and and the reasons for doing them different ways. Okay, in MicroStrategy there are there are many different ways to do things for a reason, right? Sometimes you might want to do something at the project level, right? And you might want it to just apply to everything by default. Sometimes you might want a specific report to only work a certain way. Sometimes you might want a specific attribute to work a certain way. So I'm going to cover all these in this video. Um, but first, let's talk about the data. So I, as you can see here, I've got the similar query as I showed before where I'm querying the underlying fact table. Let's run this. And now I showed you I added, the only thing the difference is I added cancel date. And as you can see, sometimes whether or not an order was canceled, the cancel date will be null. Could be empty, right? So the point I'm trying to make with showing you this is that think about the nature of your data, right? Do you have the type of data where there may or may not be values in your in your fact tables or in your tables, right? Maybe certain attributes may be missing or may, right? They may not always guaranteed to be populated, right? If you have this situation occur frequently, it might make more sense to change this setting at the project level, right? So let's say that we had this situation occur frequently, right? We had many different attributes in our MicroStrategy project, and in many cases, they may be null, right? So we don't want to drop records there, right? So let's go ahead and show you that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on our project. We're going to select Project Configuration, okay? We're going to go to our Database Instances. Then we're going to go to our, we're going to select our whatever connection we want. It's, I'm assuming it's a primary connection. So we'll go to VLDB Properties. We're going to go down to Joins. And I believe you're going to have to make sure under Tools, the Show Advanced Settings is selected. You may have to make sure that's checked off. Um, and we're going to come down to Preserve All Final Pass Result Elements. We're going to uncheck Default. And we're going to choose preserve all final pass, all final result pass elements. Okay. And we're going to save and close this and click OK. Now it's going to tell you you need to restart your intelligence server, but you don't. You just need to unload and reload the project. All right. Now that we unloaded and loaded our project, we're going to rerun our report. 
that was broken out by ship week. And then let's scroll down. Oh, let's bring our report back. And then let's scroll down and we can see there's our 34,482. So now let's go ahead and look at our SQL. And as you can see, it outer joined based on ship date. But you'll notice it outer joined everything, right? So all of our attributes got outer joined to their lookup tables, right? So this was, so again, we changed this. So now this will be the default behavior for all the reports and all the attributes in the entire project, okay? Now, the next thing I want to show you is, let's say we did not want to do this at the project level setting. Um, and we and instead we maybe we wanted only a specific attribute to function like this So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so now again, let's suppose we only wanted this um, The week it in order shipped we only wanted that attribute to be outer joined So we're gonna come down to our attribute. We're gonna choose our shipped week We're gonna edit that attribute then we're going to tools VLDB properties. We're gonna go to joins preserve all final pass elements we're going to uncheck default, and we're going to, again, we're going to choose preserve all final result pass elements. We're going to save and close that, save and close that, okay? Then we're going to refresh our schema because we changed an attribute, okay? And now, and now we're going to go back and let's run our report again, right? So we still see 25,000. Why is that? We changed the setting at the attribute level. Why is it not working? Let's view our SQL. As you can see, nothing changed. Well, let me show you why. If you do this, if you change the setting at the attribute level, okay, in order for it to actually behave that way on the report, you're going to have to change the setting at the report level. And let me show you what that is. You're going to go into VLDB properties at the report level now. You're going to go to joins. You're going to come down to preserve all final pass elements. And you're going to choose this fourth option here. Do not listen to report level setting. Uh, preserve all final elements according to the setting at the attribute level, right? So that's that, that part of the sentence there. Preserve elements of final pass according to the setting at the attribute level. That is telling this report to use whatever the setting the attribute has, okay? So you need to choose that in combination with that in order for this to work, okay? So we'll click save and close. And now we'll run this report again. And now let's rerun our report. And there you go. You see the left outer join on week. But I want to point out something here. I want to show, let's look at the results. Because if you look at the, remember, we're expecting 34,000. If you look at the actual total, you still only see 25,000. Now, why is that? Well, ship week, if you remember, when I showed you the underlying fact table, the fact the the value in the fact table is a date. It's ship date, okay. And ship week is determined based on the date. It's part of a hierarchy, right? It's part of a time hierarchy, right? Day, week, month, year. So, in order for this to function as we want, we also have to go in and change uh, the lower level attributes as well. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll come down to ship date. We'll edit this. Now, in reality, you'd probably change every attribute in the hierarchy, but for this case, let's come down to ship date. Let's edit that. Tools, VLDB properties again. Joins, and preserve all final result pass elements. Save and close. Save and close that. And then again, we'll refresh our schema. Update. Okay. Now let's go back. Let's run our report and we should see our 34,000. Let's scroll down, and indeed we do. 34,482, and let's confirm the SQL. Scroll down, and yes, you can see it did indeed outer join only those attributes. As you can see, the other attribute lookup tables were inner joined. However, our ship date and our ship week were indeed left outer joined. Now. The next thing you can do is, well, what if you don't want to change the attribute? What if you only want a specific report to function like this, right? You don't want to change the project level setting, and you don't want to change the attribute setting, okay? Let's take a look at that. All right, so lastly, if we only want a specific report to function like this, 
we're going to right click, we're going to come in here, we're going to edit the report, okay, and then we're going to go data, VLDB properties, and very simply we're going to come down to joins, preserve all, final pass result elements, uncheck default, and we're going to just choose the second option here, preserve all final result pass elements. Save and close that, and then let's run our report, and we should see our 34,000 number that we're looking for. Yes, we do see 34,000, and obviously you can also see here that if you look here, our last record, our week is blank. So we have 9,000 units that have not shipped. Okay, that's what that's telling us. All right, let's go ahead and confirm the SQL. And as you can see, there's our outer joins. All right, so that'll do it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And also check out jamestechtips.com for more BI-related content. And thanks for watching.